everyone, welcome to part three of my in-depth review of the new Grey Knights Codex. As always, my name is Jay, and today I will be discussing the elite slots, and if I have time, probably the troop slots, because there's not a lot, um, there's not a lot of selection to this codex. You know, it's it's not a bad codex. I think it'll still be as competitive as it was before. Um, Grey Knights were kind of known as the cheese army for a while back in fifth, but then sixth edition kind of fixed that when it nerfed uh, force weapons to AP3. And uh, a lot of armies just got really good against killing Terminators, such as Tau and Eldar. So they weren't known as the Cheese Army anymore, but I think this Codex will... I think it'll be quasi... I think it'll, you know, have some competitive builds, for sure. It's it's uh, not terrible. Obviously, they did remove a few things, and they moved around the Force organization, or organization chart. But it's okay. We'll be discussing that in today's thing. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be very con con just constructive. I'm going to talk about army building and lists and uh, what would be good together, rather than just, you know, being Debbie Downer. So, as I mentioned, uh, consistent with the previous codices in 7th edition, for example, Orcs, um, they've removed the ability to move around the Force Organization chart, so you, you can't bring this guy to bring these guys' as troops anymore, which is unfortunate for Purifiers and Paladins. So the Elite slot is going to be a very, very crucial slot in a Grey Knight's army. Because many of the times people are bringing paladins or purifiers as troops, so now you just bring they score anyway, but um, now you can um, sorry now you can just bring them as elites, and you do get up to four elite slots in the Grey Knight Force Organization chart, which I discussed in the first video. I also forgot to mention, in case you guys are wondering, uh, they also removed Grand Strategy. I was I forgot to bring that up about the Grand Masters. There's no more Grand Strategy. I think I, oh I think I did bring that up, but uh, it's okay. So first we'll discuss the Purifier Squad. Now the Purifiers were a lot of people's choice unit in the old Codex. You basically brought Castellan Crow as a kind of attacks, and then now you bring Purifiers as troops. And unfortunately, they did nerf Cleansing Flame pretty heavily in Seventh Edition. Cleansing Flame used to be just hilarious against Horde armies, but now it's not really. It is just a, it's just a Nova power. But um, Purifier squads actually went up in cost by 5 points. They used to be 120, now they're 125. Same stat line as before. They're, um, you get, for 125 points, you get 4 Purifiers and 1 Knight of the Flame. Who's a character. And you can include up to five more for 25 points each. And I think you would, if I brought Purifiers, I would definitely bring squads of 10. Since the elite slot is so powerful now, and you only have to bring one, uh, one troop choice. You know, that's pretty cool. Or the other people are really now debating about, I bet you can combine the force organization chart pretty easily, Grey Knights with Grey Knights. Um, because all you gotta do is bring, you know, the minimum. So one HQ, one troop, and you can bring two heavies, and then you can ally it with two more heavies, and and so it won't be too bad if you want to bring a lot more heavies. But the uh, as I said, the elite slots is going to be some interestingness. So they have power armor, bolt, storm bolter, nemesis four sword for eight grenades, crack grenades, psycho grenades. The Aegis, which is just they get to reroll results of one when deny the witch, you know, Brotherhood of Psychers, which is good because then it, it adds plus one to their their modifier. Um, I believe I believe it's plus one to their modifier for um, Deny the Witch Combat Squad's Fearless Oh, they're Fearless, that's great So, you know, I think they were Fearless in the previous one Perverted Enemy Against Demons, of course Purity of Spirit, Purifying Flame And Purifying Flame means that uh, Let's see What does Purifying Flame do? Uh, oh, it uh, all close combats made by purifiers have soul blaze. Not bad. So it might hurt them in the long run. So again, against a horde army, that'd be pretty handy. And uh, purifiers know the banishment, hammer hand, and cleansing flame powers. For every five models in the unit, two purifiers may take an item from the special weapons list. Now, special weapons list is what it's awesome. The incinerator, silencer, psi cannon. So if you have ten, you can bring four psi cannons, two psi cannons, or silencers, or incinerators. Uh, incinerators are still strength 6 AP4, assault 1, soul blaze. Silencers, 24 on train, strength 4 AP minus, heavy 6, force. So they're force weapons. That's pretty cool. And side cannons, uh, strength 7, AP4, salvo 2, 4, rending. So you just don't want to move, because if you move, your range is 
is cut in half. It has rending, still strength 7, so that'll still help. You know, that many shots. Yeah, because I think actually Psy Cannons are the best option right now for the guns, because now that Psy, can uh, Psy Ammo is gone, um, you need the rending to pop the large vehicle. Strength 7 can destroy a, with rending, can destroy a Land Raider, if you get lucky enough. So, squads of 10 would be great. Maybe combat squatted into two squads of 5. That way it takes up only, you know, one slot and then two squads. And you get a lot of side cannon shots to fire at different things. So cool stuff. And now you don't need to bring Castell and Crow anymore. He's kind of weird. He got more expensive. But he's no longer, you know, his sword no longer helps the enemy. But he can no longer take down your opponent when he kills them. So, I don't know. He's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting choice at the moment. So, yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah, so next we're going to go to the Paladin Squad. Now, the Paladins were one of my favorites because they were such a cheap choice. If you wanted to build your army, you can, you know, bring Paladins, and that's just awesome. So Paladins can no longer be taken as troops because you... Um, you can only, um, you can't take them as troops because they, they took that ability away from Drago, and Drago is obviously now in the Lord's War chart. But uh, Paladins are basically the same as in stat, same stat line as they were before. You know, we higher weapon skill of 5, leadership of 9. Um, for 165 points, you get 3 Paladins, which is equivalent. They changed the minimum squad size. And that's important because people used to bring like squads of one for 55 points each and just drop them because you can bring as troops. You'd bring small squads of one, just drop them around the field on objectives. You can't do that anymore. Now you need to bring a minimum of three for the same points cost. But what I really like is a couple things got really cheap, i.e. Uh, the upgrade to an apothecary is now only 20 points. You may upgrade one paladin to an apothecary, replacing a storm bolter with an Arthesium for 20 points. 20 points. You get Feel No Pain on Paladins. It used to be like 75 points. And now it's 20 points. So you could bring, for 185 points, you could bring four squads of Paladins with Feel No Pain. That's nasty. You know, I know Terminator armor isn't as good as it used to, with a lot of armies getting, you know, rending, but that is pretty menacing. You know, that much, it takes a lot to go through a Paladin with Feel No Pain. It really does. Or some really high strength stuff. So, very cool stuff in there. And uh, you take up to seven additional Paladins for 54 points each. They do have Combat Squads, so you can Combat Squad them if you want. They have Terminator Armor, Storm Bolter, Nimbus Four Sword. And the Four Sword, as I mentioned in the previous video, has no bonus anymore. It used to be, like, depending on which weapon you wanted, um, it used to give a bonus. But now it's just melee force... Demon Bane, um, and obviously it, um, and Demon Bane has changed slightly as well. If the Force Psychic Power is successfully manifested and targets a unit with one or more weapons with the special rule, then, in addition to the usual effects, all weapons with the special rule rerolled fail to hit to wound and armor penetration rolls against models with the Demon Special Rule while well, the Blessing is in effect. There you go. So, it's slightly different than it was before, and, uh, yeah, they're an interesting squad. So I still think they're going to be viable. I think people are going to be bringing, in the Elite section, either amounts of Venerable Dreads or Paladins. Because I think Paladins with Feel No Pain is going to be really nasty. They know the Banishment, Hammerhand, Powers, and they can take a Land Raider as a dedicated transport, so it doesn't take up that not, that heavy force organization chart. You only get two slot. you only get two choices. Uh, that's the best part, though, with the new Codex. You can kind of bring, like, with one troop and one heavy... Or one troop and one um, HQ minimum, you can bring a lot of multiple force orgs if you want. So that's kind of interesting. So, yeah, overall, Paladins got uh, the same price, but the upgrade to a Apothecary got much cheaper, which will help them. They can also bring a Brotherhood Banner, which uh, changes everything slightly. It used to upgrade uh, up the weapon skill and increase the number of attacks. Now it just gives an extra attack, and um, they reroll morale and pinning checks because they're not fearless. Or you can bring one Nemesis Banner per army, and the Nemesis Banner, as I mentioned in the last one, um, grants fearless to any to all the models within 12, all the units within 12 inches of the bearer, and plus one attack, 
and all the demons within 12 inches of them treat terrain as dangerous. So, that's pretty cool. Good stuff there. Up next, we have the Dreadnought. Unfortunately, the Dreadnought was moved, because in the old Codex, the Dreadnought was in both the Heavy and the Elite slot, so people could bring six Dreadnoughts. The answer to that is, if you still want to bring six Dreadnoughts, bring two Force Organization charts, and you'll be in great shape. Because you can now, with a very low minimum cost, of like two Strike Squads and two Leaders, two Librarians, and you're in great shape. So, the Dreadnought is now 125 points, so it went up in cost. Um, it was unfortunate. It used to be in the heavy slot, and it used to be 100 points, 115 points. And so, it's now 125 points. Um, but, the ability to make it venerable is only 25 points. So, it's now 150 points for a venerable dreadnought. It used to be 175, so it dropped in cost. I think a venerable dread is the way to go. I have an extra 25 points. Right now, vehicles got a huge buff in 7th edition. They became much harder to kill. So now making a venerable Dreadnought is even better because it changes, it, oh, it decreases the odds of them dying to so little. So that's really good stuff there. Um, now here's where it gets a little confusing. They have war gear. They have a multi melta Power Fist with built-in Storm Boulder, Searchlights, and Smoke Launchers. So they have a multi melta and a Power Fist. And you can replace the Power Fist with a Twinling Dotto Cannon for 15 points. But it also says a may, may take items from the Dreadnought weapons list. Um, let's see here. Which is, I believe, another... Yeah, you can take another Twin-Linked Autocannon for 5 points. So you can still do the Twin-Linked Autocannon list, and it's just an extra, you know, 20 points. So Twin-Linked Autocannon, Dread, Venerable Dreadnought, is now 170 points. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Now, obviously, Sai Ammo is gone. So Cyphelman Dreads are going to be gone. But the double auto cannon list, I still think, is the best combination. Because Strength 7, I know it's not as good as Strength 8, but Strength 7 will help against light armored vehicles, and it'll just kill a lot of the medium stuff, and you have to use Psy can Unfortunately, Psy Cannons are one of the few things, or a, a like a Dread Knight in close combat, to uh, destroy like the Land Raiders. So I really think the... Um, you could extra armors if you want, which would help as well, but I think that the Venerable Dreads are going to be a, a great combination for this army. They also have Psychic Pilot, Mastery Level 1, so they're a Psychic Vehicle, and Psychic Vehicles were kind of removed from the rest of the other vehicles. I'll be going over the other vehicles later, but Psychic Pilot was removed. They have preferred enemy, the Aegis, and the Aegis is now just um, the plus one, I believe, to Deny the Witches. Oh, sorry, I can reroll... At least one model with this rule can reroll uh, results of one to, for deny the witch rolls. You know, not too bad. So, as I said, Dreadnought, I think, is a good option, but Venerable Dread is a great option for this army. Venerable Dread, two twin-linked autocannons, strength seven, no longer strength eight, but you get a lot, and you get to shoot a lot, and it'll do some damage to things. You know, against most armies, it'll be okay. Uh, against orcs, Tyranids, you'll be fine. Against the only thing is you're gonna, it's gonna suck if you're shooting front armor of a Vindicator, or and you can't glance a Land Raider anymore. But uh, you'll be okay. And uh, that's it for the Elite slot. As I said, there's not a lot to this Codex. Uh, the Tech Marine was moved from the Elite slot to the um, the HQ slot, and. On top of that, um, the elites were also filled with the Inquisitorial Henchmen in the previous Codex, and now the Inquisitorial Henchmen are in their own Codex, and the Assassins are in their own Data Slate, which I will be doing a review later on. So, we're only 10 minutes in. Let's keep going. I think we should keep going. Let's talk about the troops. Which, again, this will not be very long, because there's only two troops choices now, and you can't even take Paladins or Purifiers as troops anymore, so there's just two troops choices. And I said the minimum number of troops is one, and the maximum is four. If you do go four, I'd recommend combat squading them to eight, but that's just my opinion. And the two choices are the Strike Squad, the Base Marine, or the Terminators. And I really like the Terminators, but we'll discuss that in a moment. So the Strike Squad's got more expensive. Again, kind of weird. But uh, they got more expensive. They used to be 100 points, and now they're 110. Um, you get four Grey Knights and a Justicar for 110 points. They have, you know, the usual stat line. Four is all around, leadership eight. Justicar is leadership nine. And Power Armor, Storm Bolter, Nemesis Force Sword, Frag Grenades, Crack Grenades, Psych Out Grenades, The Aegis, They Shall Know No Fear, Brotherhood of Psychers, Combat Squads, Deep Strike, 
preferred enemy, purity of the spirit. So again, they have deep strike themselves, so you don't need to ever worry. They are never going to take a drop pod. And the new cool rule is that, you know, if you're bringing a force organization chart primarily from the Grey Knights Codex, you can start deep striking turn one, and one of the warlord traits, or one of the uh, artifacts, one of the other, uh, allows them to deep strike in turn one on a three automatically. So that's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome stuff. I like it. So you can drop in all your deep strike. You know, you like, I think max squads of Grey Knights dropping around the battlefield, just shooting everything would be amazing. And they can run and shoot the turn they come in. That's awesome. Uh, you can include up to five additional Grey Knights for 20 points each. So I guess the Justicar is the extra 10 point guy. For every five models in the unit, one Grey Knight may take an item from the special the heavy, the heavy special weapons list. Uh, any Grey Knight may take weapons from the list. Uh, the Demon Hammers, I think, got a little more expensive. They're now 10 points. I thought they were cheaper before. Maybe I'm wrong. But uh, Nemesis Force Halberd is now plus one to strength, AP3, two handed. Falchions are just an extra attack. Nemesis Warding Staff has the Ward special rule. It's strength plus two, AP4. And the Demon Hammer is, of course, strength times two, AP2. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. And they can take a Rhino or a Razorback as a dedicated transport. They no longer have access to the Chimeras because they do not have access to the Chimera henchmen anymore. So, good stuff there. So, once again, pretty much standard stuff. They went a little bit more expensive in cost. But, of course, now you only have to take one. If you really want to take a Paladin list or a Purifier list, you only have to take one squad. You know, 110 points. That's all you need to pay. So they're not bad there. Um, I think Grey Knights are going to still be, you know, the Strike Squads are still a very viable option. Uh, you stack your field with them. They don't have the, unfortunately, they lost that cool psychic power where they, um, they autom you know, they could pass it so they automatically, you know, you fail if you deep strike near them. That sucks because that way I mean, they got weaker. But, uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. So then, Terminator Squad. So the Terminator Squad um, got cheaper significantly. And once again, they're still troops. So you can still take Terminators as troops. They went down from 200 points each to 165. 35 points cheaper. That's awesome. And for that, you get four Grey Knight Terminators and a Justicar. And same style as before, Leadership 9. They have the same weapons as before. They have the Aegis, they shall know no fear, Brotherhood of Psychers, Master Level 1, Combat Squads, Preferred Enemy, Purity of Spirits, and you take up to five additional Grey Knights, and for every five models, one Grey Knight Terminator can take one extra item from the Terminator Special Weapons list. The Terminator Special Weapons list is just the same Incinerator, Silencer, or Psy Cannon. As I said, Psy Cannons I still think are going to be good. They're going to be the best option. The Terminator Justicar may take um, items from the melee weapons or special issue weapons work. More gear, so they can melt a bomb, digital weapons, teleport homer, uh, master crafted. Cool. And you can take a land raider, land raider crusader, or land raider redeemer as a dedicated transport. Once again, not uh, taking up that force organization chart. So that's good stuff there. So, what do I think so far of the um, the troops and the elite slots? So first of all, the elites. I think that the venerable dread with auto cans is still going to be a very viable option in this codex. Uh, tech marine, not tech marine. Sorry. Other than that, you have a Purifiers or the Paladins. Both are good choices if you already loved them before. You're still going to love them today. The Paladins got cheaper to get tons of Apothecaries on the field. That's great. You know, uh, purify, you know, a bunch of Paladins running around that have Feel No Pain. That'll be good. Or Purifiers. You can take a bunch of Purifier spam if you still want. You don't no longer have to worry about taking Castellan Crow. So you can take a really good HQ. And... Um, Purifiers will still be a good option. You know, they didn't change really in any way. No. Other than you really don't want to move if you have side cannons. Or silencers have a force now. That's kind of cool. Um, what else? And as I said, versus Dreadnought versus Venerable Dread, I would pretty much always pay for that Venerable Dread. Because for an extra 25 points, you get an extra survivability factor that will keep that Dreadnought alive. These days now, you need to get a 7 on the pen chart to, to destroy him. So if it's an AP2 weapon... The odds of destroying a vehicle go from 1 in 6 to like 1 in 36. That's awesome. So, great stuff there. And as far as the troops go, up to you. I really like the Terminators. Uh, Terminators for 165 points, that's a great points cost. Put them in a Land Raider, your, your opponent's going to have some troubles. Definitely going to have some problems. Um, or you can just go Strike Squads, man. Tons of Strike Squads in Razorbacks or Rhinos. Uh, I'll discuss the Razorbacks and the Rhinos in the next vehicle, in the next sort of video. Obviously, um, 
Obviously now the Razorbacks and Rhinos don't have access to the Psy ammo anymore, so the I still think a, a twin-linked heavy bolter would still be a good combination because it's a very cheap points cost in a, in a Razorback. Plus, at least now your transports are extra survivable, so they'll get the, your guys to wherever they need to go. So that's about it. So I really hope you enjoyed this part of my in-depth review of the Grey Knights Codex. Stay tuned for the next part where I'll be going over the fast tech choices and possibly the heavy support if I have time. And because uh, if not, it'll just be in a separate video. You know what I mean? It's all good. So I really hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment in the comment section down below if you want to add anything to the conversation, you feel that I missed something, that I made a mistake, or uh, that you just have something to add to the conversation. So like the video, subscribe to my channel if you've done so, and stay tuned for the next part. Till next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting.